Good morning, everyone. So this is our first lesson in our 400 special topics in human resource management. So what do you expect in this class? So in our course syllabus, course perspectives, this class discusses on um, what are the trends, demographic, um, the changes in the business environment, the changes in laws and regulation and how it affects um, the human resources of an organization at the same time, how businesses or how it affects the business. So for this lesson, we have our objectives. So here are our objectives. So first is be able to define HRM in terms of globalization, workforce, diversity, and skill requirement, among other as we discussed. So there are actually a lot. Next is understand and learn some common issues and topics in human resource management. Learn that HR is affected by what is happening around the globe. So these are our three objectives of our class, a lesson. So first, globalization. Pro probably globaliz globalization is not something new for a lot of you, right? You have been hearing this for quite some time already. Probably in your senior high, you have heard this word already, have defined this word already. So technically, this world is not something that is aloof to most of you, right? So as people, uh, people as resources are invaluable assets of an organization, diba? For a business to be successful, every company is obligated to enhance their workforce by aligning their human resources strategies with the latest trends. With the advancement of technology, the human resources department of each company has been transforming gradually over the years. And now, part of globalization is the pandemic. And everybody knows this. The global COVID-19 pandemic has compelled HR professionals to swiftly respond to critical business priorities, handle fluctuations in the workforce, and harness the latest technology. So, some of you are actually working, part-time working, or full-time working, full-time student. You have been affected with this pandemic. You have probably observed and feel what the HR is doing to its human capital. What are the necessary strategies they are they need to apply in order to cope up with the pandemic? So business to so let's continue with globalization. Like I said, you already know this, but for purposes of definition, businesses today doesn't have national boundaries. It reaches around the world. The rise of multinational corporation faces new requirements on the human resources, human resource manager. The HR department needs to ensure that the appropriate mix of employees in terms of knowledge, skills, and cultural adaptab adaptability is available to handle global assignments. In order to meet this goal, the organization must train individuals to meet the challenges of globalization. The employees must have working knowledge of the language and culture in terms of values, morals, customs, and laws of the host country. So if you have been introduced to BPO4, right, SMP4, so for, sorry, SMP4, Business Process Outsourcing. And if you have friends or if you are working in the BPO company and your client is from the Western country, you actually been trained in terms of values, moral, customs, and laws of your host country, of your client. Why? Why? Why do you think you are trained to do this, to train, to respond to your clients? This is because of globalization. We 
businesses are not are not anymore limiting themselves in the four corners of their countries. They have to spread out all over the world because what? Lower cost, um, economies of scale, and the likes. So mostly lower labor cost, production cost, and among other necessary things that can help their organization. And as you can as you can also think, there are a lot of Filipinos working around the globe. So the Filipinos are not anymore limited to the um jobs in our country. And why is it the Philipp that the Filipino manpower is being appreciated to a lot of country? It is because we are or we can easily adapt to values, morals, customs, and even laws of the country where we want to work or where we aspire to work. Or those who are working already, they have the knowledge and skills and cultural adaptability. So can you imagine the idea or the role of how you in the future as human resource managers and professionals have to do in order to make your manpower, your human capital competitive. But despite this, there are challenges. Not only the pandemic that we have, but globalization actually. So now with the Asian integration, I think you already are familiar with this also Asian integration we're in, we're in the ASEAN country, Association of Southeast Asian Nation. The, those 10 countries in the ASEAN integration are actually um, planning to limit some of its trades to share knowledge. So if you are a Filipino who wants to work, let's just say in Malaysia or in Singapore, you have to have the competencies that is at par with them. That's why you are studying. That's why you want to have a degree. Because if you get out of this institution, our, our, our school, you want to be competitive. Not only maybe if you want to be a businessman, you want to create your own HR, fir HR firm, or you want to be an employee, you want to be competitive and not only at par with the people within or the workforce within our locality, within our province or within our country, but to be competitive enough to compete in the global market of employees or of businessmen. Okay, so globalization is actually a challenge for HR. And this is actually a trend that has been, um, been an issue but the word globalization is just coined way back 2000s. Wala pa na exist nga word sa una, but because of people making, making words and the like, so they have coined globalization and coined a meaning of globalization. Globalization in terms of the HR area. So I hope you understand with, we are now okay with globalization. Everybody understand that. So another issues that I'm going to discuss, this, this has been also an issue way back. I was teaching actually um, this, the same subject way back uh, three years, four years before, prior. And when I Googled it up last time, the same issue come up actually. This, that's why I have this as a um, introductory topics because it still is updated and it is still a challenge like globalization and the next topic that I have. Parihara siya gyapon ba? Ni come up ra gyapon siya nga mga issues and trends and it has uh, challenge ra gyapon siya way back and still karon gyapon challenge ra gyapon siya sa, sa companies around the world, especially those multinational corporations who have businesses in um, other countries like at the Philippines, we have Jollibee in other countries. So we can call Jollibee a globalized business because they are not only limiting their business um, in the country. So that's why I'm discussing it to you now, sharing it to you. Even if you have already known this 
word actually. So the next is diversity. So diversity, in the past, um, human resource management was considerably simpler because our workforce was strikingly homogeneous. Today's workforce comprised of people of different gender, age, social class, sexual orientation, values, personality, characteristics, ethnicity, religion, education, language, physical appearances, marital status, lifestyle, beliefs, ideologies, and background characteristics such as the geographic origin, tenure with the organization, and economic status, and the list could go on. So this is now the workforce we have right now. Unlike before, it's homogeneous. Like parihara sila tanat. The company where I came from, actually, it's somehow homogeneous in, in, in a certain way. They are, not, um, they are not hiring any employee that are not Bisaya. So most of the employees of that company I was been are Bisaya. And they, are, they have been assigned to various parts of the Philippines. They are not globalized, but they are international uh, national business. They have um, branches in Manila in Mindanao and a lot of part in Luzon area and of course within the Visaya, Visayas region. So what is the reason of that company of mine to choose only Visaya people? Their rationale was ang mga Visaya kay Kugihan. Then I was thinking, halabitaw no? Because some people in our province, muadtog Manila kay magpabulan, an mudugay silag pabulan sa Manila kay ngano man. It's because they are hard working. Matrastan sila. So I think that was the nationality of our of our heads of that previous company I work with. I don't know what the update of that company, but that was the culture way back. That they are homogeneous in certain ways. So let's define the diversity. So as you can see in your screen, it is critically linked to the organization's strategic direction. So this the um, definition of diversity is actually more on the HR side, okay? But I know you got the meaning of diversity, workforce diversity for that matter. So where diversity flourishes, the potential benefits from better creativity and decision-making and greater innovation can be accrued to help increase organizations' competitiveness. So because different individuals with various backgrounds and various attitudes have different ideas, and these ideas of them can actually help the company flourish if it can be taken, um, it can be, well, taken care of and be recognized by the organization. So this includes uh, um, one means of achieving that is through the organization's benefit package. So this includes HRM offerings that fall under the heading of the family-friendly organization. A fa family-friendly organization is one that has flexible work schedules and provides such employee benefits such as childcare, in addition to the diversity brought by gender and nationality, HRM must be aware of the age differences that exist in today's workforce. HRM must train people of different age group to effectively manage, manage, that's manage guys, and to deal with each other and to respect the diversity of views that each offers. So actually, this is a challenge of organization, especially if the workforce of that organization is from different generation. You are the Gen Zers or the Generation Z. I, on the other hand, is a millennial. Our heads, the senior heads, are what the generation, the baby boomers, or those ones born after the World War II or during the martial law. If the organization cannot not the organization, if HR or the organization in the as a whole cannot understand this one way or the other, this different generation of employees cannot work together because have 
everyone have different ideology. Every generation have different um, characteristics, their usual characteristics, right? And you are actually experiencing that, not only probably in, if you're working in your organization, but in our society. That's why your elder will always say, kami sa una, kami sa una. That is actually happening, right? Because they do not understand you fully. And you does not understand them fully. But since you enroll in this program and wants to study in this program, whatever is your um, reason for studying human resource management, as your major, then you must be aware that you have to be knowledgeable enough on what this generation are capable of, their weaknesses and the like, so that you can understand them. Okay? It is your role. If you're going to be, if you're serious in this in this course and you want to be an HR professional or if you want to have your own business and create a lot of network. And when you create a lot of network, you're dealing with people. So you have to be aware of this, the age difference, the generation gap, and the likes. Another is gender. Their gender identity. There's a lot. LGBTQ++. There's a lot, right? According to the study, there are almost 70 types of gender so you have to at least know some of it and understand it okay and apply it so that you can understand people and apply necessary strategy in order for your organization to compete not only locally but globally especially if you are working in a globalized company okay that is your goal and it's important that you listen attentively on what the learnings and not only listen atten attentively, but also apply it as much as possible. So that's diversity. So in situation where in, there is a very, very diverse workforce, what do they do? What the company does. So, like I said, this is more on the definition of diversity on the HR, okay? So, but what do you mean by diversity? You can Google it up, but this is what I get. It means understanding. I think I already mentioned this um, along the discussion. Understanding that each individual is unique and recognizing our individual differences. This can be along the dimension of race, Ethnicity, gender, like I said, a while ago, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, religious belief, among others. So another definition that I got is diversity means more than just acknowledging and or tolerating difference. So someone is not does not belong to your group, and that someone is somehow you can consider as diverse. It's not only Acknowledging that this someone is different and tolerating his or her difference. Diversity is a set of conscious practice that involve conscious practice, guys. Remember that conscious practice. So it's not only you knowing it, but you are also, also practicing it. Con um, conscious practice that involve, one, Understanding and appreciating interdependence of humanity, culture, and natural environment. Conscious practice. Number two, practicing mutual respect for qualities and experiences that are different from our own. Sometimes we judge people because we don't have the same experience with them. And then not realizing that... Um, Moment on social nagdaku, di ba? It's just that mas dagan na jumong common, dagang homogeneous. So sa ikana biyang nalahi sa panon, mo na isigi hug bulihon or sigi hug sa why and the likes, di ba? But sa why is paon hanay rabia pun na usahay, kinsay makauna. But we are all diverse. 
sometimes nung makalimot ang hala diverse man dito, lahi, lahi man dito ang mga ta, klasik-klasing tao. Lami raman po manaway, man ang maglamit ng tabi. But you as an HR professionals in the future, even now as a student, keep in mind our habit as a conscious practice that respect our qualities and the experience that differ from our own. The third is understanding that diversity includes not only ways of being, but also ways of knowing. Okay? Not only ways of being, but knowing. Let's just say your friends belong to the LGBTQ plus community. Yes, I understand that we don't have laws in our country that accepts um, same-sex marriage and the likes. But guys, if you look at the anti-discrimination law of our country, it is already there that we are not supposed to, to fire people or fire people because of their um, sexual or orientation or their religious affiliation and the likes. So if, if all the Filipinos understand this, actually, we can have a better human resource capital in our country. And the human resource managers and heads will not have a lot of problem because everybody understands everybody, respects everybody. Diba? If you think about it, if we think about it, actually. The fourth is recognizing that personal, cultural, and institutionalized discrimination creates and sustains privileges for some while creating and sustaining disadvantage for others. So there are also institutionalized discrimination. I've known of this company. They sell products, actually. I don't know if it's called discrimination, but if once you are in that company, you're only supposed to buy their product if you want to avail. Uh, if you, you're supposed to only purchase their product if your intention is to have something of that kind of product, I'm not going to mention the company, guys, because it's really hard not to be mentioned, uh, to be discriminated and probably um, sued. Okay, but this actually it's a local company. We have hindi sila pwede mo palit o lain ng mga product na atong a variant or atong a variety of product sa lain company. Maskin pa nga ang ilang ganahan ng product kay kay katong sa lain nga brand kana rajo dapat ang ilang ginabaligya i don't think that's discrimination it's up for you to actually um define it or think about it as an hr pohon lastly building alliance across differences so that we can work together to eradicate all forms of discrimination so building alliance some of you are na na naman mas mga balay ninyo mostly no some of probably na as a kung na amo sa hinterlands ka po yu marami na og siguro mo kay tungod sa signal and the likes try being friends or create a relationship with people older than you people younger than you with the tambays with the professionals and the likes then you can probably Little by little, in such way, makasabot nga nung inana. Because I keep the actually um, asking myself, I, I do tambay sometimes in, na may tambay and dress amu, na po yung mga tambay po, mga out of school youth. Pero to mga tao nga, contenta na po silang kinabuhi. And then ma-amaze ko, kay, magikan ko sa trabaho, kung wala ka na, hindi ko tiktabay mo trabaho, na magikan ko sa work, maka ka sila dito mabuntag coffee, cigarettes. Some of these are actually my relatives. I'm sharing you the experience I have in in the in relation to HR and diversity. Cigarettes, ginom na ngon sa pa sa buntag. Okay, we have to um go to work. I have to go to work early so to avoid traffic also. I have to probably get out of the house. I leave the house around 7:15. So that's what I see every single day. And then, paguli na kung The same people are there 
sitting, having their cigarettes, talking, chica chica, drinking, having fun actually. They're actually laughing at the lights. Then I wonder, and I, I think, mommy is Gunila. Simple life. And then they're happy with it. And then I ask myself, how can, what if they want to go somewhere? Like, ganahan sila mo kaon sila sa hayahay. Ganahan sila mga pisa Starbucks. Paunsa. Wala well, sila inana nga pangandoy. Na ko pwede tubag sa kuang imagination. Na ko siya nga. But anyways, siguro maopo ng ilaha kay lahit maman sila background. Lahit po sila o environment nga gitubuan. Lahit po sila um, aside sa environment, the social environment they have, the upbringing, matter man ko na siya. So, if manarbaho na sila, yung kuyog na sila na to, sabto na to sila. That's why, matambay ko, kuyog na sila. Kuyog na sila. And ma-amaze ka. They actually have wisdom within them. And you can get positivity out of them because they don't make life complicated. There is something with them. So, inakapun. And if ka niyong makuyog, so dapat po sabto ni mo sila. As simple as they are. Right? So, let's move on. We're done with diversity and the conscious practice that involves um, in diversity, acknowledging and or tolerating difference. So let's move to this. Changing skills requirement. Before, during the industrial period, kung magalama ka sa patos, okay na na, galama ka sa patos. Yung kung naasa ka sa manufacturing company, kung iyon mong post, post stamp, ikaw ting post of stamp. So iyon trabaho is, lawayan ng post, di patapot sa envelope. Muna na iyon trabaho, okay na siya. Wala problema. But, globalization happens. Diversity happens. Workforce diversity happens. Skill requirement happens. So you're not only, dahil dapat isara mo ang skill. That's why during the interview, mangunta na dyan ng HR, usa mo yung skill. So what can you offer to the organization? It's not only limited to TikTok skills. Not organization needs your TikTok skills. Your stalking skills, your binge watching in Netflix skills. No, they want something from you that you can create productivity, competitiveness, and improve the quality of the organization you're applying to. And if you are making a business, if you want to create in the a business in the future, what skills, what multiple skills you have that will give you an advantage among other startup businesses. Ano sa may nani mo? May ika-offer si mong negosyo or kay ika-offer sa company ngayon mong trabahuan. Stocking skills? This is why strategic human resource planning will have to carefully weigh the skill deficiencies and shortage. So what are the skills needed in the company? What are the skills having a shortage in the company? HRM department will have to devise suitable training and short-term short -term programs to bridge the skill gaps and deficiencies. I have been teaching for quite some time, but online teaching was just a recent skill I acquired. I'm not even into engaging into meeting you up, guys. Diba? Rather, I'm making pre-made video. You can probably imagine, you're probably imagining how I look right now. But this is just a new skill that I have learned. But before I have learned these skills, our HR in the school, our heads are encouraging us and giving us trainings to bridge the gap. Okay, Raku. Okay, batan un batan un pako. Char, batan un pako. I'm still Charnas Pates. 
how about those individual who is of different generation knows what a computer is knows what the internet is but does not have the skill on how to manipulate it diba so what type of training the hr should do for them you as an individual as of the moment if there are the if you are seeing postings like hiring blah 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 this is the, these are the requirements make sure you know the basics of words you know the basics of excel making simple um making simple formula in excel know how to manipulate word know how to manipulate powerpoint presentation some of you are very good at this actually when we have an some of you are under me way back and they have good uh, video editing skills. I'm so amazed with you guys. I'm not, I haven't have that skill actually pa. Gamay, but gamay rajun. Unlike you, you're good at it. So when you work in the future, even that skill is imuharang self-taught raka kay nangita raka sa YT, nangita raka online, nag-research raka, and then what you have known as imuang knowledge, imuang gi-apply. So, dako ka grado sa imong mga subjects and the likes. Parihira po na kung manarbaho ka. Parihira po na kung maghimo kang negosyo and create your network of customers and clienteles. The skill, changing skill requirements is actually a challenge for organization because an applicant needs to have a multiple skills also. Like, if you are a BPO um, call center agent, it's not only a skill in managing people, people, understanding their diversity and the likes. The pay, patience, I don't know if it's virtue man ang patience, no? But multiple skills as a manage and the likes. Manage your life, manage your laag life, manage your love life. Because the change requirements, the skill requirements have changed. And if you do not cope up with change, one way or the other, it's either di ka makatrabaho or di li ka makanegosyo. Or kung unsa imong aspirations sa life ni mo, unsa imong goals, unsa imong pangandoy, di li imong ma-realize kaya ikaw mismo, wala ka ni try to improve sa imong kagalingon. Wala ka ni cope up sa change requirements. Okay? That's why in recruiting and developing skilled labor is important for any or any company concerned about competitiveness, productivity, and quality. Managing a diverse workforce effectively, and not only managing diverse workforce, but managing diverse workforce in a multinational organization. Skill deficiencies translate into significant losses for the organization in terms of poor quality work and lower productivity because they are not skilled. How can they produce quality output? Increase in employee accident, accidents, so these are the result of unskilled workers or low-skilled workers or poor-skilled workers, increase in employee accident, and of course, there are customer complaints. Since a growing number of jobs will require more education and higher levels of language than current ones, it's not only language per se that what we speak, but the language of the organization, the language of the business organization, the language of the workplace that you are in. HRM practitioners and specialists will have to communicate this to educators and community leaders. Actually, before we give subjects and before we offer courses, we ask the industry, the business industry, what do they need? It's not an accident na naamo aning a subject. Because guys, we need to inform you na dapat naamo aning nga mga skills. Dapat ninyo ni makatunan. Dapat nyo i-improve in yourself because no matter how much I talk here, if you are not an active listener, an active practitioner of what I am teaching you, if you go to the workforce, if you create your own business, mo na lang mo, may pa'y naminaw ko ni ma'am sa una o i-apply na ko ang ako ang gi nakatunan sa una. Because what we have acquired, if we do not share it, then we cannot duplicate it. Dili pong ka maka, dili, di ka maka-duplicate. Kung ganang ka manigosyo, pero kung siya mo nalang, wala niyo mo i-apply, dili, dyan na mo yung manigosyo. If ganang ka manarbaho, kay, di ka ganang manigosyo, kay wala pa kay kapital, later na ka manigosyo kung naan na kay kapital. If dili, di mo na ma-share sa imuhang, imuhang, wala di mo na-enhance, kay wala ka nag-sinio, takapag-skwila, 
Dan dili pugaw, one way or another, after six months, dili juga i-hire because that is your probationary period. If during the probationary period, during the training, orientations, and the likes, during the recruitment, wala rajad gyapon ka. Yung magmupana ka, nga naman kung nainani, nga naman mo dili, kung mainana. Then you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? And you build yourself because you want to be a better employee, better leaders, better managers. And if you want to be serious in this profession, HR, human resource managers, then you will know how to handle yourself and how to handle other people and understand them and apply what necessary skill you have learned, not only in school, but in real life to these people you are managing in the future. Okay? So next. So these are all actually, especially now during the pandemic, grabe kayo ni. So corporate downsizing and continuous impro improvement program. Somehow these two are, are an irony. So the premise of downsizing is to reduce the number of workers employed by the organization. HRM department has a very important role to play in downsizing. HRM people must ensure that proper communication must take place during this time. Why? They must minimize the negative effect of rumors and ensure that individuals are kept informed with factual data. HRM must also deal with actual layoff. HRM depth is the key to the downsizing discussion that have to take a place. Especially now during the pandemic, there are a lot of businesses who have closed. Before they close, if the HR manager, the HR professional are so serious about this, explain na nila ang mga employee nga mo, niya nahitabo, dili na taka-cope up, sa mga expenses, wala na kaya customers, kay maskin pag unsa na to pag-advertise and the likes of sahay, ang nature sa atong job, dili man siya, ato ang business is not really a necessity to people because what people fo is focusing now is the immediate needs, food, shelter, utilities, not anymore on the luxurious side. So, and then before you downsize, you inform people, you don't leave them hanging. Because once there is the effect of negative rumor, your people will not actually work well na food before you close up your business. So it's really important. So if it were in the old normal, some reasons of actually downsizing is the incorporation of new technology. Like in manufacturing firm, they manufacturing firm, they instead of the manual labor, they use uh, machineries to do things that has been done by machines before. So, mga po na siya ang um, reason sana. Next is continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is actually, you, can, you have actually encountered this in TQM, your BA302 subject. Um, the same, at the same time with your SMP4, Business Process Outsourcing 1, continuous process improvement, not only in SMP4, but your teacher will actually um, discuss or give a glimpse of this in, in SMP5. So, continuous improvement pro program focus on the long-term well-being of the organization. It is a process whereby an organization focuses on quality and builds a better foundation to serve its customer. This is often involves a company-wide initiative to improve quality and productivity. I keep repeating this to my class in strategic management and Organ, um, operations management with TQM. The likes of Procter & Gamble, the likes of Jollibee, the likes of McDonald's, the likes of um, Colgate Palmolive. Why do you think they keep on advertising that they have this, they improve this, and the blah, blah, that? Not only in television but when every time we scroll up or we scroll on social media on youtube na sila okay what do you think because these businesses 
continuously improve. They have within their organization the, in the initiative to improve quality and productivity continuously. If you remember the Deming's wheel or the Deming cy cycle, the plan, do, check, act. It's a cycle, right? Plan, do, check if what you have planned is or implemented have done well, and then plan, do, check, and then act. Plan, do, check, act. Balik, balik, Rasha. Because even if you are already on the top, you are already mature in your organization. You have the profit. You're the number one this, the number one that. It does not mean wala kay pwedeng i-improve. Guys, change is constant. The business environment is continuously changing. The pandemic has shifted how business should work. 360. No one knows pandemic will happen. But because the businesses have this initiative to improve quality and productivity, they are still able to cater to our various needs and wants. They are still on the top. They are still on the business, not maybe on the top, but they are still engaged in business, except for those who have downsized and eventually close on small businesses. But these big businesses, now affected, Zila, everybody's affected with this pandemic. But they have cope up. Kay naman sila mantra nga continuous improvement. Appeal man sa ilang organization. And this is not only applicable to the organ to the machineries, to the strategies, because including in the strategy is your manpower. How are you going to continuously improve your manpower, your diverse manpower? How are you going to improve this? It's not only giving them benefits, monetary benefits, and monetary whatever, anything monetary is not anymore how you're going to motivate your employee. It is one of the great motivator, money, but not, any, not anymore na na siya. Especially to the millennials like me and the Gen Zers like you. Lahi ng inyo ha. In our generation, it's more on career development. Murag na idaghan nga inana, career, career. Ginahan among generation, ganahan nga mo cut-cut sa ladder of success. However, your generation, ang inyong hapon, para mainggan nyo mo nga mo continuously improve, is to be appreciated almost always. Like, you achieve this. Oh, congrats, Miss Kwen, Shwen, Shwen. You have achieved this because that is how your generation... Muna po na yung generation. Muna po yung characteristic. And you as an HR practitioner in the future should understand that. If you want to continuously improve your employees, give better bet quality and productivity, retain best employees, then make sure you continuously improve them. Motivate them, not only monetarily. So the company changes its operation to focus on the customer and involve workers in matters affecting them. Oh, like I said, customer focus at the same time, worker focus. Companies strive to improve everything that they do from hiring quality people to administrative paper processing to meeting customer needs. Because when you love your employees, di na kinahanglan mo market maayo para sa imuhang mang, imong products or services. Because your employees mismo ang mo market para ni mo. Take care of your employees. Take care of your human resources. Not only giving them good compensation, give them good working environment. Understand them. That is all that they want. And one way or the other, your employees will continuously improve. And the consequences of this is retain customers, good customer service, meeting your customer needs and wants. Another challenge that, and issues that is been in the HR is this one. This next topic, actually. Although continuous improvement initiative, what we have discussed a while ago, 
are positive start in many of organizations, they typically focus on ongoing, go, ongoing incremental change, continuous man improvement na hinera. Such action is intuitively appealing. The constant and permanent search to make things better. Yet, many companies function in an environment that is dynamic. This is another challenge. Facing rapid and constant change, like what happened now. Dami. As a result, continuous improvement programs may not be the best interest of the organization. So not everything, continuous improvement is good, is good but it's not always the best interest of the organization. Not all organizations, some, okay? This is case-to-case -case basis. The problem with them is that they may provide a false sense of security because they are already of good quality. False sense of security ba? Abi nilang okay na sila kay continuous improvement, na na sila sa top, but basin dili dito maujud. False security. Ongoing incremental change avoids facing up the possibility that the organization may really need is radical or quantum change. Such drastic change result in re-engineering of the organization. Re-engineering is like a pandemic. You have to change 360. Quantum. Quantum leap. That term, you're familiar with that? Quantum leap. Dili ka step by step, but derecho. Kinala ni mo i-improve tanan, usbon tanan. This is another challenge also, but it depends upon the organization. Re-engineering, of course, when more than 70% of the work process in an organization are evaluated and altered. It requires organizational members to rethink what work should be done, how it is to be done, and how to best implement these decisions. You cannot just re-engineer, guys, okay? These are the challenges and issues in human resources, but you cannot just re-engineer any organization. You have to actually study first and understand before you re-engineer. Re-engineering changes how organizations do their business and directly affects the employees. See, you cannot just re-engineer. It does not only affect the employees, but it affects the business in general. Re-engineering may leave certain employees frustrated and angry and unsure of what to expect because pasin mawala sila, malaid off sila, ma downsize, wala na sila. According to HRM, must, according to human resource management, must have mechanism in place for employees to get appropriate direction of what to do and what to expect as well as assistance in dealing with the conflict that they may permeate the organization. For re-engineering to generate its benefit, HRM needs to offer skill training to its employees. The same with re-engineering from manual labor to computerized labor. If you have virus generations in that organization, it's okay for the younger generation. They probably are can easily adapt. How about those middle-aged individuals who belong to another generation? wherein technology is not their forte. Let's just say that some of them know. Let's just say 10% or 5% of them knows how, how the machine works or how the computer system works or how, how, how technology works. But that 10% does not comprise 100%. You need 100% of your organ um, manpower to know the new system. So how are you going to do that? So before you shift into that, before to, you have to have the quantum lift, make sure that your employees are, are well informed on the lift para magdungan mo ug ug put. Kaya kung di mo magdungan, dagang mga bilin, kung dagan ang mga nabilin, kaysa ng ug put, mong sa manang organization. So HR, must know this, must understand this. Whether it is a new process, what you re-engineer, whether it is a new process, a new technology enhancement, working in teams, because some people are not so confident to work in teams. They, are, they rather work individually. Having more decisions, making authority, or the like, employee would need new skills as a result of re-engineering process. So dapat, like I said, magdungan mo ugpot. Dilit lang para 
ni mo, but para sa organization, para sa inyong customer. Because re-engineering is not continuous improvement na ginagmay, hinay, hinay, nga kanuneng paglambo. This one is a 360 shift on how you're going to, on how work is done, what to be done, and how best implement this decision. So HR, take charge. Happy na ta, guys. Relax. So next is decentralized work size and contingent workforce. So decentralized. Decentralized work sites also offer opportunities that may meet the need of diversified workforce. Those who have family responsibilities like childcare or those who have disabilities may prefer to work in their homes rather than travel to the organization's facility. So actually, decentralized work sites is really, 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 really applicable in today's time, right? This is skeletal. But even before, this has already been practiced. Now, it is more, uh, it is well practiced because we had like, nag shift man ta. We have also to tend those um, needs uh, to take care of our, to take care of our employees. That's why we have work from home, skeletal workforce and the likes. Work sites are getting more and more decentralized. Telecommute, telecommuting capabilities that exist today have made it possible for employees to be located anywhere on the globe. With this potential, the employers no longer have to consider locating a business near its workforce. Telecommuting also offers an opportunity for a business in a high-cost area to have its work done in area where lower wages prevail. Globalization, part of globalization. And because of decentralized work sites, it's like having your manufacturing firm in China, having your assembly firm in the U.S., getting your resources in Africa and Mexico. And then when you meet with the heads of these sites of your multinational companies, they don't need, the, and your central office is in the U.S., and as I say, in the Philippines, they don't need to come here in the Philippines to converge. They just have to use online platform for video conferencing, presentation of data, and the likes. Diba? Another, for human resource managers, decentralized work sites presents a challenge. Of course, it is a challenge. Most of that challenge revolves around training managers in how to establish and ensure appropriate work quality and on-time completion. Work at home may also require HR, HRM to rethink its compensation policy. Will it pay the R or on a contingent workers? It will be organization responsibility to ensure that health and safety of the centralized workforce. So this is actually a, actually a challenge as of the moment, diba? Right? Like me, your instructor, how did our HR think on saon kunila pag swildo? Or you as a student, how am I going to grade you whether you're listening this time I'm talking or the time that you downloaded this video or watch this video on YouTube? How am I going to, to come if I'm going to have a compensation policy or grading policy for you and how you are well listening and how you're well accepting my, my discussion now? I'm going to be your HR. Wala mako kabalo ga unsa mo dira karon ga yaka ga higda ga kuyog si mong uyab o wala kay uyab aw pag pundos da plate so how are we going to to give you the right grade that's why we have quizzes diba we have quizzes we have assignments we have performance tasks we have activities that you have to do this is the only way and we have deadlines because this is the only way I will know that somehow, if I want to create a good output, a quality product out of you, because you are a prod, you are going to be the product of our college, our institution, then I should make means and ways on how to evaluate you. If nanarbaho mo, compensation policy, but you are still a student, then your grade, your grade reflects your how diligent you are, or what kind of output are you? Kung nagtinarong budget mo. Diba? 
And then is the contingent workforce. Kaget sa mga na. Bright ba yung... Contingent workers are individuals who are typically hired for a shorter period of time. They perform specific tasks that often require special job skills and are employed when an organization experiencing significant deviation in its workflow. When an organization makes a strategic decision to employ a sizable portion of its workers from the contingency ranks, several, several, several HRM issues come to the forefront. This includes being able to have these virtual employees available when needed, providing scheduling options that meet their needs and making decisions about whether or not benefit or not benefit will be offered to the contingent workforce. Because we are in the new normal. These are probably the in I can give an example in a BPO company, ramp, ramp, and then they're working from home. Especially during December, they need to add more employees that only serves for such time. If it were the old normal, during starts of September, the burr, burr, burr time, you can actually observe that businesses in our capital city, Dumaguete City, will hire more employees to cater to the needs of the market. They would they demand service. So they need to hire contingent workforce. But this, this is there, there are challenges of the contingent workforce. You hire them. Good thing for those who are experienced or those um, the laid, uh, those who probably laid off before you hire new balik. That's good. But what if delay? So they have also to consider that. No organization can, can make the transition in the contingent workforce, can make the decision, the transition to a contingent workforce without sufficient planning. They have also to plan this. They cannot just dive into it. As such, when this strategic decision are being made with are being made, HRM, human resource managers, must be an active partner in this discussion. After all, it is HRM department's responsibility to locate and bring into organization these temporary workers. As temporary workers are brought in, HRM will also have the responsibility to quickly adapting them to the organization. Oh, di ba? Kapuyas yung trabaho. You need to tell them, inani dapat, inani dapat, inani dapat. And then, sa iyo pag-ingon, Ana, dapat convincing ka nga inani yung dapat ilang buhaton if nana sila sa organization. Quickly, letting your it is your responsibility of quickly adapting them to the organization. HRM will also have to give some thought on how it will attract quality temporaries. Quickly adapting them to the organization at the same time, adapt to the quality that you are actually giving your clients. That's hard, but you have to do it because they are needed by the organization, this contingent workforce, and you have planned for it, so it must work. Lastly, this is also a challenge and a trend and an issue. Employee involvement. For today's organization, organizations, sorry, to be successful, there are a number of employee involvement concepts that appear to be accepted employee involvement concept that appear to be accepted. So not every employee involvement are accepted. There are some. So these are, Monisha, dapat involve ang employees. Delegation, participative management, work teams, goal setting, employee training, and empowering of employees. HRM has a significant role to play in employee involvement because you are the one who will encourage the employee to speak up, to get involved. Delegation. Delegation is your leader delegating you to do this task. This is actually um, somehow creating new leaders. Good leaders are influencing uh, their members to be better and create more leaders. Leadership is not dictatorship. Leadership is influencing people to do better and creating more leaders. 
participative management. So if are this, these are, there are decisions in the organization, they have to do this. They have to participate. Work in teams, like what I am going to have with you. You, we are all sitting comfortably, most of us in our respective, respective home, but we still have to work as a group, as a team. It's not only guys, it's not only you guys who are actually working as a team. Even as uh, that work from home, we have we are given tasks that we need to work as a team. We need to decide as a team. So don't even think na kapoy lisud. Because the more you think na lisud kapoy maghimo og report or to do the intended uh, expected output output from you, then it will be hard because you keep on thinking on the negative negative thoughts. You keep on thinking on on kapoy dilikaya lisud. The more you cannot work on your task in any subjects that you will have. Diba? You have to work as a team. How are you going to do it with despite all the challenges that we have right now? It's up to you. And of course, employee training. This is important in continuous improvement. Not only that, in re-engineering. Not only that, because people are diverse and businesses are globalized. And empower your employees. Let your employees make this make a decision within their level in the organization. And you as an HR has a big role about this. So employee involvement. What is needed in this demonstrated leadership? What is demonstrated le leadership? At the same time, as well as supportive management. Employees need to be trained and what's where, that's where human resource management has a significant role. You really have a significant role to play, guys. Employees expected to delegate, to have decisions participatively handled, to work in teams or set goals cannot set goals cannot do so unless they know and understand what it is that they are to do empowering employee requires extensive training in all aspect of the job how can you empower someone to 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 make something if we well, should train something on that thing it's like you're pushing someone in a pool and that someone does not know how to swim what will happen to that person? It's either that person will survive or that person will die. Why will that person survive? Kaya siya ganan mamatay, of course. Why will that person die? Because we're pushing him or pushing her to do something that he or she is not equipped with. How can you give something you don't have? How can you, how can you empower your employees, if you haven't trained your employees? How can your employees produce quality products and provide quality service if they, will, they were not trained to do so, to provide that? Diba? Workers may need to understand how new job design processes. They, need, they may need training and interpersonal skills to, be, to make participative and work teams function properly. Person, interpersonal skills. Kabalo ka mo, abi-abi. Dili ka garbusa. Napaka HR. Dili ka Lord, Lord nga HR. Abi, ikaw ang naa sa taas. No. The, the higher your, the higher our position may be in the organization or in the society, the more humble we should become. Okay. That's the end of my discussion to you. Hope you learned something. Thank you and have a good day.